so when Johnny was droning, <laughs> there was lots. There was like a French coach that came along, and they were all watching Johnny's uh, screen, so they could actually see the pictures, and they were all like, "Wow, magnifique, that's amazing!" <laughs> so we just saw four sperm whales, and they are the largest animal with teeth. And we had to keep a respectful distance so they uh, make sure that they're not disturbed. So how they approach them is they approach them from behind. So we were just slowly kind of following them when they'd come up and then we would see and then we'd get a little bit closer. Hey everyone and welcome to our channel. We are Hannah and Johnny, two travellers on an endless adventure. In 2017, we started finding our adventure to travel full time. Since then, we've lived in a camper van with our cats, learnt to surf and even moved to Cornwall. Hit the subscribe button to join us each week for a new episode of Finding Our Adventure as we search for adventures big and small. Good morning everybody and welcome to another episode of Finding Our Adventure. This week we're in the Azores and we've woken to a beautiful morning here on San Miguel Island. We're actually in the Ponta Delgada Harbour and we're going to be doing some whale watching this morning so we're really excited about that. We're going to be going out with uh, Futurismo Azores Adventures and we're really excited to see if we're going to see any whales. So we're not sure what boat we're going on this morning, we're either going on one of these small diddy boats, I think, here, or we're going on a bigger boat, which is the catamaran. We just had our safety briefing and we're now heading out into the ocean. We, they've guaranteed, apparently, that if we don't see any cetaceans, so that's whales or dolphins, you can come back and have another trip. So I think they're pretty confident that we're gonna see either or. Um, but what's really cool about what they, how they spot the whales or the dolphins is that they actually have observation points across the island. So they have people with really strong binoculars and they're out looking for any sightings and then they will tell the guys here on the boat and then we'll go and see if we can find them. So we've literally just left the harbour and the dolphin, we've spotted common dolphins and there's quite a few of them but it's crazy how quickly we've already spotted something in just a few minutes and they've been swimming around the boat, swimming under the boat and it's beautiful to see. So we've been going for just about an hour on the boat and we're basically in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and we have spotted some sperm whales and they're just in front of the boat and you can see that they're spitting out the water because they're breathing, which is really cool. So we just saw four sperm whales and they are the largest animal with teeth and we had to keep a respectful distance so they uh, make sure that they're not disturbed. So how they approach them is they approach them from behind so we were just slowly kind of following them when they'd come up and then we would see and then we'd get a little bit closer. But yeah, amazing to see. So we saw dolphins and whales and now we're just heading back to Ponta de Garda and we're gonna, we're pretty hungry now, so we're gonna go and get some lunch.
we've just got back to port after our incredible whale watching experience. We've had such a good time and it's been the best way to start our time here in the Azores. On the way back we saw a massive pod of bottlenose dolphins and they were swimming all around the boats. So we stopped there for a while. So we're a little bit late for our lunch appointment now. Uh, so we're just going to head over there now. So we've come to Cayo de Sardinia for lunch and we've got beautiful views of the harbour all around us. Our food's just arrived and Johnny has gone with the tuna steak which comes with chips and salad and then I have gone with the ceviche and we've got shrimps with like a garlic buttery sauce. We've just driven to the western side of the island to Ponta de Ferreira which is actually a geothermal pool so basically the volcanic heat from the earth meets the ocean just here and it creates a lovely outdoor hot tub. So the pool is only accessible at low tide which is why it's quite busy at the moment and also it is a Sunday afternoon so it's the weekend and everyone's here to enjoy it. There's just a chamber down here where you can feel the heat and you can see the steam as well. coming out and it's definitely a lot hotter on this end. Whoa. <laughs> there are ropes to hold on to so Johnny's holding on to the GoPro for this life and uh, yeah it feels like a hot tub. Like I can feel my face going a bit red like when you've been in the hot tub for a bit too long. And also what were they saying about when the tide goes out completely it can get up to like then 60, it can get 70? Really hot, yeah. There is a lifeguard so I don't know if he like kicks everybody out at a certain point where it's maybe a bit too hot, I don't know, but yeah, it's very nice, fun experience. I don't think I've ever done something like this before. <laughs> There's a couple of crabs just hiding in the rock. Maybe it's a bit too hot for them, they might be alive. <laughs> We've just got back to the car after being in the hot water, which was really cool. We loved how it was different temperatures, depending on where the ocean was, um, near the thermal um, springs. Um, just such a unique experience and definitely something that I've never heard of before. I've never seen a, um, a tidal pool that's been heated by geothermal um, springs. So yeah, really enjoyed that. We're about to head off to dinner now, and I think we're just gonna get changed quickly. We've come up to the top floor of the Doubletree Hilton Hotel which has just recently opened and there is a rooftop bar called Mystico and we've been served some beautiful looking cocktails. This one, I'm not sure what it is but it's beautiful colours of the sunset and we've got beautiful views of the ocean and the surrounding scenery here is just so nice. I think we're going to get a really nice sunset as well. All of the clouds are kind of more on the inside of the land inside of the land, <laughs> more inland and uh, it's completely kind of clear out by the ocean so I think we're going to spend a few hours here enjoying a few drinks and then we're going to have dinner too. So we've just been surprised with this platter of cheeses and they're all local cheeses from across the island I think. Um, so some of them are from Sao Jorge, uh, some of them are from Fayal and the last one I can't remember the name. <laughs> Do you remember the name? No, started with a T, I'm not sure. Uh, and then we've also got some pineapple sauce. It's like a, kind of looks like apple sauce, but it, we tried some yesterday, it's very good. And then we've also got some bread and some grapes. So the sun is just starting to dip. We're getting a really nice glow for sunset. And we've just had some more food arrive. We've got ceviche, uh, and today we have got lily fish. I've never heard of it before. I don't know what it looks like, so we'll have to Google it afterwards. But it smells really good, and it looks like some sort of scoop of polenta or mash or something. So it smells really good. So we thought that the ceviche was the main, but actually we've now been brought out steaks with, <laughs> with chips. <laughs> And then Johnny was just saying that he thinks that they don't want us to leave and then we've got to try every dish on the menu. <laughs> so 
so yeah so we're going to be eating this very slowly but it smells amazing we've got some roasted vegetables with it and also some chips and of course johnny has requested the spicy sauce Good morning everybody and welcome to a lovely another day here on San Miguel Island. This morning we've headed a little bit further east from uh, Ponta Delgada and we've arrived in a beautiful town um, where we can see an island just behind me called Villa, Ca Villa Campo. Villa Franca. <laughs> and the town we're in is Villa Franco de Campo and it's beautiful here it's one of the sunniest parts of um, San Miguel so it's quite a flat area where most of the clouds just kind of blow away it's a little bit cloudy today but it's still really nice and warm and Johnny just droned over to the island behind me um, it's well it's quite famous because it held one of the diving championships for Red Bull and um, there's a few boats there at the moment and I think you can kayak to it as well so we're watching some kayakers making their way but it's really cool to see it from above because you really get to appreciate the shape of it because it's an old um, volcanic crater and in the middle of the island it's a complete perfect circle right in the centre of those rocks. So what was really cool about having the drone with us for this particular location is that you get to really appreciate what it looks like. Because a lot of the pictures that people see of this island, they probably expect that they'll be able to see it from the viewpoint. So when you come here, you can't see the circular um, kind of pool, natural pool inside of the island. So when Johnny was droning, <laughs> there was lots, there was like a French coach that came along and they were all watching Johnny's uh, screen so they could actually see the pictures and they were all like, wow, magnifique, that's amazing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I was, I was joking to them that we should have had it on like a big TV so they could, they could all see it. But um, yeah, really cool spot. And also it's, actually a nature reserve and there are endemic species found only on that island. We've just driven up into the mountains and it's so beautiful here, it's so tropical, we've got these beautiful hydrangeas all along the roads and I think they were brought in from the Portuguese when they first uh, moved onto the islands but it's just so amazing, everywhere you look it's so beautiful, lush and green and there's just trees everywhere and it's very very peaceful. We're just walking along this road to a waterfall and it's just a little bit further so let's see if we can find it. We just walked a couple of minutes down the road and we actually had to walk through a tunnel. There is plenty of room on the edge of the road for you to walk through the tunnel and the car, there's not many cars coming down this uh, particular road, but it is so worth it. The view of the waterfall behind me is incredible. I think Johnny's gonna get the drone up so you can get some closer shots. So we're a little bit limited with time, but it looks really spectacular and it's just surrounded by beautiful greenery and tropical leaves and flowers yeah it's paradise
We've just driven five minutes down the road from where the waterfall was, which was absolutely incredible. And we come to Furnas village, which is a dormant volcano. And you can see all the steam rising behind me, lots of water bubbling, and also lots of very eggy smells. We're nerding out with all the really cool volcanic activity here and we've just come to a bit where it's a little bit more calm but it's like little pools of bubbles and you can still feel the heat so it must be boiling hot but there's beautiful colours of like yellows and greens and like different formations but yeah it's really surprised us how volcanic it is here on the Azores. We've just driven to Furnas Lake, which is just a little bit further on from Furnas Village. And there's even more geothermal activity here. And one really cool thing is that they um, basically cook food underground here. And so it's a traditional dish called cocido. And they put dishes under the ground for about five hours and let it cook really nice and tender. Um, and you can come and watch them taking it out of the ground. And we're gonna go and try some for lunch. So we've just come to lunch at Terra Nostra Garden Hotel and we've just been brought out some local bread and also um, some butter which is made from the local peppers here on the island. We've also got some more ceviche and it's tuna with some mayonnaise and a little bit of pomegranate on top. Mm -hmm. So the main event has just arrived and this is the casino, so where we were watching it coming out of the ground. So there's a lot of food here at the moment, so I'll try and remember everything that he, but he, every time when he was serving it, he would tell us every single thing that was put on the plate. So we've got beef, we've got chorizo, we've got blood sausage, we've got um, ribs, tongue, ear, uh, chicken, yam, potato, sweet potato, carrots, cabbage and kale and then also we've got some rice. Oh and when they were serving it they poured um, like a sauce which is basically what the whole casino is cooked in. It's really good. just like it's falling apart because it's obviously been cooking for a long time. Mm. So after that delicious lunch we've just come outside of the hotel to Terra Nostra Park and it's some grounds with lots of beautiful plants and over 2,000 different types of trees and just behind me here we've got some geothermal pools where you can go and have a swim and enjoy some lovely warm water. If you've been following us for a while now you'll know we absolutely love tropical gardens and this garden is absolutely incredible. It's huge, so many different types of trees, it's so peaceful, it's so calm, there's loads of different fish in the different ponds, loads of different birds as well and it's just really calm and relaxing walking around. There are so many different areas to this park and we've just come across one of the sculpture gardens and I love how these sculptures, they're just covered in moss, they look like they've been taken over by nature and we've got lots of different animals here so I think we've got some sort of gorilla potentially and a few little monkeys, dinosaurs, elephants, is that dinosaur? Oh no, elephant. There's a dinosaur over there. <laughs> oh yeah, there is a dinosaur. Um, and yeah, it's really, really cool, surrounded by palm trees just you just could get lost here and spend hours.
So we just walked across these stepping stones and there are some beautiful lily pads surrounding the stepping stones. There's also some little frogs that have jumped out onto the lily pads and they're enjoying basking in the sun. And also you can spot within the pond itself, there's a few little bubbles from the geothermal pools. We've just driven up the mountains into this beautiful tree covered spot and we're just under the waterfall here in these beautiful thermal pools. It's a little bit cooler in here but I wonder whether it'll be a bit warmer. There's some ones further down but we've come to the ones right at the top because there's less people. So we started off in the waterfall one which was pretty cold and we worked our way down to a warm one now. It's a lot less busy than it was about half an hour ago which is really nice and we're just going to warm up in this um, thermal spring for a little while and enjoy the beautiful surroundings. Yeah there's like a couple of different pools so there's like three or four I think around here and they're like terraced so they're, they're like quite shallow so you can just sit in them and there's a few steps to go. So the name of this place is actually Caldera Velha and we've had an amazing time just relaxing in the thermal pools which has been really nice and we're going to be heading back to the car now to try to go find a sunset point to get some amazing photos because the, hopefully there's going to be a really nice sunset tonight. I actually really like all these um, tree ferns they've got around the place and some of them have grown really big and I think in the garden centres back home in Cornwall you can actually buy a tree fern so maybe we'll have to think about planting one of those. Even though it is quite busy here, I think they do limit the numbers of people that can come in because there was people turning up to the gate who hadn't booked in advance and they're being turned away. And there are also tickets just to walk around the grounds and enjoy the like the jungly tropical atmosphere and the thermal pools. But I think the tickets to go in the thermal pools are extra. Hannah, why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> to get to the ice cream van on the other side. <laughs> So in the car park there is a lovely map showing where we are and you can actually get a bus to lots of different places in the Volcano Bogo area and we are going to be going here to this lake, Fogo Lake and there's a couple of viewpoints so maybe we'll go to one see if it's good and just see the other one if we've got time but that's basically what it's going to look like and hopefully we'll show you it in a minute. 